Hi, this is Sudeep, and I welcome you back to this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with StatPro. In the last couple of weeks, we had been discussing the problem of a simply supported beam with an inclined roller support. We had done the manual solution of the reaction of that statically determined simply supported beam with the inclined roller support. And we had also given some preliminary concepts on how we could model that structure in Stat Pro. Today, we will actually model that structure in Stat Pro. But before we go forward, please do take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you're new to this channel to join us in this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with Stat Pro. And if you have been around with us for some time in this channel, and you had been getting value out of it, please do hit the like button. So we had been discussing this particular structure that you see on the screen in the last couple of weeks. And today our objective is to model this structure as a whole in StatPro, do the analysis and interpret the analysis results. So let us see how we could model the structure in StatPro. So we have the Stat Pro open and before we go forward and do anything with Stat Pro, we just need to ensure that the base sitting units are proper. We remember that the structural units were in keeps and feet, the dimension of the structure was in feet and the loads were in kips. So we want to have an English base unit setting and we see that it is already set appropriately. So we are happy with this. So let us go now and create a new start file which we call as uh, simply supported beam with inclined support and the folder for me uh, or the location of the start file is correct so we would go and create the start file by hitting the create button well, the first thing that we see in the new stat file is that the nodal coordinates are being specified in units of inches, but we remember that our structural dimensions were defined in units of feet, which would mean that we need to convert the feet to inches, which is inconvenient. So what we do is we'd right click and we'd go to the display options and go to the structure units and change the dimension values to the units of feet instead of the default inches. And we click on apply and we click on okay. Well, you might be confused as to why it is still being displayed in inches. Well, it's a refresh issue. So if you just go to another window and come back, you will see that the units have changed back to feet. The first node that we will create is the extreme left node and let us consider that node to be situated at the origin. So we will say that the x, y and z coordinates are 0, 0, 0. The second node after the extreme left node is at a distance of 4 feet from it. So it would be defined as 4 for the x coordinate because we are defining the beam in the x direction 400 zero, zero. and as you can see from the picture the third node that we would create is at a distance of 8 feet from the second node so 8 plus 4 would be 12 which is the x coordinate in absolute terms from the origin so we'll have it as 12 zero, zero. Similarly, by referring to the picture, we can see that the next node will have the coordinates of 20, 0, 0, and the last node will have the coordinates of 24, 0, 0. Now, we can actually use the add beam feature to very quickly add the beams by clicking on the, the various nodes, and our beam is now complete. The next thing that we would do is to assign properties to these particular beams. For the sake of our problem, it is not very important to know what type of properties or material we want to assign to this beam. 
So let us create uh, or let us assign a steel section to this beam. So we are by default in the American database. So let us select the W21 by 223, that section, which is a white flat section, and add it to our properties whole structure box. And we want to assign it to all the beams on the screen. So we click on assign to view option and click on the assign button. We say yes to this and this section of W21 by 2023 has been assigned to all the beams. Now, the next step, of course, is to define the supports, which is the most important thing. Now, let us click on the supports option to define the supports. And as you can see, the left node uh, is, uh, the extreme left node is a pin support. So we go and create and we select the pin support and add it. Now, the support to is thus the pin support that has been created. Use cursor to assign option and assign the pin support on the extreme left node. We can just press shift plus K to highlight all the nodes for easier reference. Now, the right node, as you can see on the picture, is the inclined support. And this is where we had a full session discussing how, what are the preliminary concepts to define an inclined support in STAT Pro. You may remember that in order to create the inclined roller support, we need to have a reference point first, and then we have to define a reference axis system for that inclined support. And based on that reference axis system, we have the X and Y axis based on which we have seen that can define the roller support as fixed but FY and MZ. If you want to know more about this discussion, you can visit the last, last session by clicking on the link above. We had also said that in order to specify or in order to identify the reference point, we would need to move three units in the horizontal direction along the global x-axis and four units along the negative direction of the global y-axis. So let us see how we can do that in Start Pro. So to create the inclined roller support, we again click on the Create button and we click on the Incline option and we say that we need to move three units in the right and four units to the left. Now the dimensions were in feet so we have to change this in feet units. So let us instead of changing the units again let us say that we want to move three feet to the right so that would mean three multiplied by 12 which would be 36 inches and minus four units downwards which would be minus four feet so four into 12 would be minus 48 and we say that we want to have now this would define the inclined axis system with the reference point because this actually defines the reference point based on which the inclined reference axis would be established and we say that we want to now release so we have selected the fixed button option and we are releasing along the FY and MZ direction. So we click on the add button and we have now defined the inclined support. Now all that we need to do use we select the use cursor to assign option and assign the support here. Now though the representation of the inclined roller is like this but it has been defined correctly. Now we remember that uh, we had modified the inclined load into its horizontal and vertical components. So based on this figure, the way that we can define the load is, that, but first we need to go to the loading option and click on the load case details, create a new load case, 
And in the first case, we define the nodal load where the nodal load was defined as 60 kips in the vertically downward direction or the along the negative direction of the global y-axis we click on the add button in the next case we had a 40 kips load acting along the positive direction of the global y-axis so we add that as well so these two loads are added as you can see here and finally for the inclined load we had a vertical component of minus 40 kips and a horizontal component of minus 30 kips because both of them are acting in the negative direction of the global y and global x axis respectively so we add this and now we can assign the first load to this particular node the second load to this node and the third node to this node. So basically if we sort of adjust the scales of viewing the load, um, so we uh, increase this value of point load so that it is made um, sufficiently small for us to view and we click on the shift V button to display the load and we can see that we have modeled the load as we have wanted. Now we want to add the analysis command. Now let us go into the text editor to check uh, what has been defined. The first thing that we need to change of course because we are modeling the structure as step plane which would mean that the out-of-plane degrees of freedom would be restrained. And we have seen that though we had set the display units to feed, it has continued converting the units to inches unit because uh, we had originally started the unit systems as chip inches. So we used the same inches unit and we could see that Though we had defined the joint coordinates in feet, it had automatically covered, converted the, the joint coordinates to the inches unit. And we would also like to look at the inclined support command, where um, the ink represents, INC uh, ink represent the inclined support. And these are the relative distances from node number five to locate the reference point and we have defined the loads and the perform analysis command is there. Now we can get out of the text editor, say yes to the changes and run the analysis command. So we go click on run analysis and the analysis com uh, run is complete. So now we would like to go into the post processing mode and check the results. Now, once you have run the analysis, our work is complete. Now, our job is to go into the post-processing mode and check out the analysis result. Now, this is something that we will do in the next session as a continuation of this particular session. And in that session, we would also show you how you can access the support reactions from the output file. So, if you have liked this session today, please do hit the like button and please do join us in the next episode. Till then, bye-bye.